Hello there geographers and welcome back to the Mr. Sin channel. Today we are going to talk about the diffusion of religion and language. Now this video is going to just scratch the surface on just a few of the world's many religions and languages. Starting out with languages, we can go back in time and trace a language back to its origin. When we go back to the starting point of a language, we are looking at a proto-language. Oftentimes this means we're looking back in time before written records. From there we can move up to a language family, which consists of a variety of different languages that have a common ancestry. Think of it as if the languages are genetically related. Then there are the language branches or groups. A language branch is a cluster of different languages that are part of a language family and make up a subdivision of that language family. A language group, on the other hand, is made up of different languages that are part of a language branch. These languages often have similar vocabulary and grammar. For example, we can look at Indo-European as an example of a language family. Here we can also see examples of language branches and also language groups. One of the interesting aspects of languages is how they evolve over time. As different people and cultures interact, we see languages shift and evolve. Oftentimes words may take on new meaning. For example, English is one of the most commonly spoken languages in the world today. Depending on where you are located, you'll often hear different dialects spoken and hear different words take on different meanings. A dialect is a regional variance that occurs in the form of a language. It's often based on the local culture. Dialects can be differences in the spelling, vocabulary, and or pronunciation of certain words. For example, I'm from Minnesota, and here we drink pop, not soda. And when we need to get water, we go to the drinking fountain, not the bubbler. And we sometimes eat hot dish, which is essentially a casserole. Now, sometimes regional differences are so distinct that we could see the formation of an isogloss, which is a boundary that is based on linguistic differences. Speaking of differences between different regions and locations, we can also look at how religions differ from location to location. When looking at religion, we can see two main categories, universalizing religions and ethnic religions. Universalizing religions are religions that seek to expand and reach as many people as possible. Oftentimes, these religions will expand through expansion diffusion, but can also diffuse through relocation diffusion. In this video, we'll be just scratching the surface on Christianity, Islam, Buddhism, and Sikhism. All are examples of universalizing religions. We also will examine ethnic religions as well which often stay in one location and do not try to convert other people. These religions often diffuse through relocation diffusion and are often connected to a specific ethnic group. The two ethnic religions we'll talk about in this video are Hinduism and Judaism. To start, let's go back to universalizing religions and look at Christianity. Christianity's hearth is located in the Eastern Mediterranean. It's a monotheistic religion, meaning they believe in one God. This is one of the Abrahamic religions and stems back to the teachings of Jesus Christ. Christians believe that Jesus was the Son of God who was sent to earth to save humanity and die for our sins. Their important religious texts are the Bible and the Ten Commandments. Christianity diffused around the world through a variety of different ways. We could see hierarchical diffusion due to missionaries and boarding schools that worked to convert people to the faith. Colonialism and imperialism also helped spread the faith to new lands. And relocation diffusion occurred through migration of people. Another Abrahamic religion that is also a universalizing religion religion is Islam, which has its hearth located in the Eastern Mediterranean. Islam is a monotheistic religion and is traced back to a single founder, Muhammad. After Muhammad passed, the faith became split between the Shia and the Sunni. The split was over who should lead the faith. Now, both the Shia and the Sunni use the Quran as their holy book and follow the five pillars of Islam to help guide their daily lives. The Shia accept the descendants of Muhammad's son-in-law Ali as the true rulers of Islam. The Sunnis, on the other hand, wanted Muhammad's successor to be chosen by by a community of his followers. Similar to Christianity, Islam has diffused in a variety of different ways. We could see examples of hierarchical diffusion as Arab traders and missionaries move through the Middle East into Africa, bringing new goods and wealth to different bazaars. As the traders and merchants moved through the area, they would explain to people that it was Islam that allowed them to become so prosperous. We can also see diffusion occur through relocation diffusion due to the migration of people. And also diffusion occurred due to trade and war as the Islamic Empire grew and expanded over the course of history. Moving into South Asia, we have Buddhism, which unlike the previous two religions, does not have a set deity. Buddhism was created by Siddhartha, also known as the Buddha. Buddhism believes that anyone can reach salvation by following the Four Noble Truths and the Middle Path. People can break free of their material needs and become free. This faith gained in popularity due to the belief that everyone could reach salvation. Prior to Buddhism, the predominant religion of the region was Hinduism, which had 
had connections with the caste system and did not preach salvation for everyone. This allowed for contagious diffusion to happen as Buddhism spread throughout communities. We also saw relocation diffusion occur due to migration to other countries and also missionaries relocating to other regions around the world. The last universalizing religion we're going to talk about in this video is Sikhism. The Sikhs are monotheistic and originate from the Punjab region. They diffuse their relocation diffusion. However, their diffusion was limited due to being located between Hinduism, Islam, and Buddhism. In the United States and many countries around the world, people often confuse Sikhs as Muslim. However, they are very different. Sikhs believe in 10 gurus who help guide Sikhs in their daily lives. These gurus preach the word of God and helped create their holy book. Moving from universalizing religions to ethnic religions, we can see Hinduism, which originated in South Asia. Hinduism is one of the world's oldest religions and is predominantly located in India. Hinduism believes in karma and dharma. The Vedas are its sacred texts, and interestingly enough, we don't know exactly who the founder of the faith is. As Hinduism spread throughout the region, we can see it diffused through stimulus diffusion. It would spread between different faiths, taking on some aspects of traditional faiths and eventually replacing them. We can also see diffusion occur due to the migration of people. This would be a form of relocation diffusion. Now, the other ethnic religion we are going to look at in this video is Judaism, which originated in the Eastern Mediterranean. This religion has three main branches, Reform, Orthodox, and Conservative. Traditions here come from the teachings of Abraham. This is actually the third Abrahamic religion. Throughout history, we have seen Judaism diffused by relocation diffusion. This has mainly been due to war and persecution. Today, the Jewish population considers Israel to be their homeland and a Jewish state. When looking at religions, regardless if it's a universalizing religion or ethnic religion, we can see the impact on the cultural landscape. Oftentimes, different faiths not only impact the local architecture, but also have influence on how men and women are treated, what clothes people wear, what foods people eat, where people worship, and much more. All right, so that was just a really quick look at language and religion and how they diffuse and influence different places. Now comes the time to practice. Answer the questions on the screen, and don't forget, if you need more help with your AP Human Geography class, check out my ultimate review packet and subscribe. As always, I'm Mr. Sin, and I'll see you next time online.